very quiet. Um, I hope you're all having a good time at home. Hope you're staying safe and well. Chapter three, the letters from no one. The escape of the Brazilian boa constrictor and Harry his longest ever punishment. By the time he was allowed out of his cupboard again, the summer holidays had started and Dudley had already broken his cine camera, Crutch's remote control aeroplane and first time on his racing bike. Knocked down old Mrs Fig as she crossed Privet Drive on her crutches. Harry was glad school was over, but there was no escaping Dudley's gang, who visited the house every single day. Pierce, Dennis, Malcolm and Gordon were all big and stupid, but as Dudley was the biggest and stupidest of the lot, he was the leader. The rest of them were all quite happy to join in Dudley's favourite sport, Harry hunting. This was why Harry spent as much time as possible out of the house, wandering around and thinking about the end of the holidays where he could see a tiny ray of hope. When September came, he would be going off to secondary school and for the first time in his life, he wouldn't be with Dudley. Dudley had a place at Uncle Vernon's old school, Smeltings. Piers Polkis was going there too. Harry, on the other hand, was going to Stonewall High, the local comprehensive. Dudley thought this was very funny. They stuff people's heads down the toilet first day at Stonewall, he told Harry. Want to come upstairs and practice? No, thanks, said Harry. The poor toilets never had anything as horrible as your head down it. It might be sick. Then he ran before Dudley could work out what he said. One day in July, Aunt Pinchver took, uh, took Dudley to London to buy his smeltings uniform, leaving Harry at Mrs Figg's. Mrs Figg's wasn't as bad as usual. It turned out she'd broken her leg, tripping over one of her cats, and she didn't seem quite as fond of them as before. She let Harry watch television and gave him a bit of chocolate cake that didn't taste as though she had it for several years. That evening, Dudley paraded around the living room for the family in his brand new uniform. Smelting boys wore maroon tailcoats, orange knickerbockers and flat straw hats, called boaters. They also carried knobbly sticks, used for hitting each other while the teachers weren't looking. This was supposed to be good training for later life. As he looked at Dudley in his new knickerbockers, Uncle Vernon said gruffly that it was the proudest moment of his life. Aunt Petra burst into tears and said she couldn't believe it was her ickle Dudley Kins. He looked so handsome and grown up. Harry didn't trust himself to speak. He thought two of his ribs might already have cracked from trying not to laugh. There was a horrible smell in the kitchen next morning when Harry went in for breakfast. It seemed to be coming from a large metal tub in the sink. He went to have a look. The tub was full of what looked like dirty rags swimming in grey water. What's this? He asked Aunt Petrina. Her lips tightened, as they always did if he dared to ask a question. Your new school uniform, she said. Harry looked in the bowl again. Oh, he said. I didn't realise it had to be so wet. Don't be stupid, snapped Aunt Petrina. I'm dyeing some of Dudley's old things grey for you. It'll look just like everyone else's when I've finished. Harry seriously doubted this, but thought it was best not to argue. He sat down at the table and tried not to think about how he was going to look on his first day at Stonewall High. Like he was wearing bits of old elephant skin, probably. Dudley and Uncle Vernon came in, both with wrinkled noses because of the smell from Harry's uniform. Uncle Vernon opened his newspaper, as usual, and Dudley banged smelting stick which he carried everywhere on the table. They heard the click of the letterbox and flop of letters on the doormat. Get the post, Dudley, said Uncle Vernon from behind his paper. Make Harry get it. Get the post, Harry. Make Dudley get it. Poke him with your smelting stick, Dudley. Harry dodged the smelting stick and went to, the get, and went to get the post. Three things lay on the doormat. A postcard from Uncle Vernon's sister, Marge, who was on who was holidaying on the Isle of Wight. A brown envelope that looked like a bill and a letter for Harry. Harry picked it up and stared at it, his heart twanging like a giant elastic band. No one ever in his whole life had written to him. Who would? 
He had no friends, no other relatives. He didn't belong to the library, so he'd never even got rude notes asking for books back. Yet here it was, a letter addressed so plainly there could be no mistake. Mr. H. Potter, the cupboard under the stairs, four privet drive, Little Wing, Surrey. The envelope was thick and heavy, made of yellowish um, parchment, and the address was written in emerald green ink. There was no stamp. Turning the envelope over, his hand trembling, Harry saw a purple wax seal bearing a coat of arms, a lion, an eagle, a badger, and a snake surrounding a large letter H. Hurry up, boy, shouted Uncle Vernon from the kitchen. What are you doing? Checking for letter bombs? He chuckled at his own joke. Harry went back to the kitchen, still staring at his letter. He handed Uncle Vernon the bill and the postcard, sat down and slowly began to open the yellow envelope. Uncle Vernon ripped open the bill, snorted in disgust and flipped over the postcard. Marge is ill, he, invo he informed Aunt Pensioner, ate a funny whelk. Dad, said Dudley suddenly, Dad, Harry's got something. Harry was on the point of unfolding his letter, which was written on the same heavy parchment as the envelope, when it was jerked sharply out of his hand by Uncle Vernon. That's mine, said Harry, trying to snatch it back. Who'd be writing to you? sneered Uncle Vernon, shaking the letter open with one hand and glancing at it. His face went from red to green, faster than a set of traffic lights. And it didn't stop there. Within seconds, it was the greyish white of old porridge. P -p 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 Pencher, he grasped. Dudley tried to grab the letter to read it, but Uncle Vernon held it high out of his reach. Aunt Pensioner took it curiously and read the first line. For a moment, it looked as though she might faint. She clutched her throat and made a choking noise. Vernon! Oh my, oh my goodness, Vernon! They stared at each other, screaming. They had forgotten that Harry and Dudley were still in the room. Dudley wasn't used to being ignored. He gave his father a sharp tap on the head with his smelting stick. I want to read that letter, he said loudly. I want to read it, said Harry furiously, as it's mine. Get out, both of you, croaked Uncle Vernon, stuffing the letter back inside its envelope. Harry didn't move. I want my letter, he shouted. Let me see it, demanded Dudley. Out, roared Uncle Vernon, and he took both Harry and Dudley by the scruff of their neck and threw them into the hall, slamming the kitchen door behind them. Harry and Dudley promptly had a furious but silent fight over who would listen at the keyhole. Dudley won. So Harry, his glasses dangling from one ear, lay flat on his stomach to listen at the crack between the door and the floor. Vernon, Aunt Pertua was saying in a quivering voice, look at the address. How could they possibly know where he sleeps? You don't think they're watching the house? Watching? Spying? Might be following us, muttered Uncle Vernon wildly. But what should we do, Vernon? Should we write back? Tell them we don't want... Harry could see Uncle Vernon's shiny black shoes pacing up and down the kitchen. No, he said finally. No, we'll ignore it. Um, and if they don't get an answer, yeah, that's definitely best. We don't want anything. But I'm not having one in the house, pensioner. Didn't we swear when we took him in we'd stamp out that dangerous nonsense? That evening, when he got back from work, Uncle Vernon did something he'd never done before. He visited Harry in his cupboard. Where's my letter? said Harry, the moment Uncle Vernon had squeezed through the door. Who's writing to me? No one. It was addressed to you by mistake, said Uncle Vernon shortly. I've burnt it. But it wasn't a mistake, said Harry. It had my cupboard on it. Silence, yelled Uncle Vernon, and a couple of spiders fell from the ceiling. He took a few deep breaths and then he forced into a smile, which looked quite painful. Um, yes, Harry, about this, um, this cupboard. Your aunt and I have been thinking. 
mm, you're really getting a bit big for it now. Um, we think it might be nice if you moved into Dudley's second bedroom. Why? said Harry. Don't ask questions, snapped his uncle. Take the stuff upstairs now. The Dursley's house had four bedrooms, one for Uncle Vernon and his aunt, and one for visitors, usually Uncle Vernon's sister, Marge. One where Dudley slept, and one where Dudley kept all the toys and things that wouldn't fit into his first bedroom. It only took Harry one trip upstairs to move everything he owned from the cupboard to his bedroom. He sat down on the bed and stared around him. Nearly everything in here was broken. The month old cine camera was lying on top of the small working tank Dudley had once driven over next door's dog. In the corner was Dudley's first ever television set, which he put into his foot put his foot through when his favourite programme had been cancelled. There was a large birdcage which had once held a parrot that Dudley had swapped at school for a real life air rifle, which was up on a shelf with the end all bent because Dudley had sat on it. Other shelves were full of books. They were the only things in the room that looked as if they'd never been touched. From downstairs came the sound of Dudley's bawling at his mother. I don't want him in there. I need that room. Make him get out. It's my room. Harry sighed, stretched out on the bed. Yesterday he'd given anything to be up here. Today he'd rather be in his cupboard with that letter than up here without it. Next morning at breakfast, everyone was rather quiet. Dudley was in shock. He screamed, whacked his father with his smelting stick. Been sick on purpose, kicked his mother and thrown his tortoise through the greenhouse roof and he still didn't have his room back. Harry was thinking about this time yesterday and bitterly wishing he'd opened the letter in the hall. His uncle and aunt kept looking at each other darkly. When the post arrived, Uncle Vernon, who seemed to be trying to be nice to Harry, made Dudley go and get it. They heard him banging things with his smelting stick all the way down the hall. Then he shouted, there's another one, Mr H Potter, to the smallest bedroom, four Privet Drive. I've just got a duty call. I need to go to Bristol.